Chapter Two, The Philosopher. During my childhood, several children of my age used to gather round me, singing and dancing, and happily spending their time. I used to teach them a lot of things during that time. I used to tell them, "Your mother undergoes a lot of suffering in bringing you up." She bears you in a womb for nine months, and undergoes great physical suffering in giving birth to you. Your father also undergoes several difficulties in nourishing and nurturing you. Hence, you must love your parents first and foremost. Never deviate from the path of truth in your daily life under any circumstances. Never speak untruth to cover up your faults, fearing punishment from your parents. It does not matter even if they scold you or beat you; you always speak the truth. The power of truth is far superior to even that of an atom bomb. There is no greater and powerful missile than truth. Truth alone will protect you. Then, the question arises: In what manner truth must be spoken? It is said, "Anudvega karam vakyam, satyam priya hitam chayat." The truth you speak should not display any emotion. If you want to speak the truth, it need not be said loudly and emotionally. Truth must always be spoken softly, lovingly, and pleasantly. The evil qualities like anger, hatred, and jealousy must be given up. Normally, when children come across any article of their liking, they feel like grabbing it. Hence, I used to teach them, you should not covet others' property. In case you need a pen or a book, you take it from your classmates after obtaining their permission. Never take it. Without their knowledge, there were a sizable number of Muslims in Puttaparthi. They used to celebrate the festivals of Muslim fakirs, in which Hindus also used to participate. In that context, I used to teach the children: it is not the religion that is important; morality is important. In fact, morality. Is the life breath of a person. Hence, cast off all your differences of religion and caste, and be friendly with every one. You also participate in the festivals of fakirs. While I was teaching thus, one boy got up and told me, "Raju, my parents will not agree to my participation in a Muslim festival." We are Brahmins. Then I explained, my dear. First and foremost, you are a human being. Your religion is love, and your caste is the caste of humanity. Therefore, you always keep that principle of unity as your goal. The parents of these children were, however, not happy with my teachings. They thought that I was spoiling young minds by my teachings. They, therefore, used to quarrel with me, saying, "What, Raju? You're spoiling our children, teaching that there should not be differences on account of caste and religion." But I was very firm, and used to argue with them that there was no religion greater than love in this world. I was not afraid of anyone. Why should I fear when I am speaking the truth? We can achieve anything in this world with truth as our weapon. One day, all the children gathered and discussed amongst themselves. Raju is teaching us so many good things, but are we able to implement even one among them? Then. They introspected among themselves as to what extent each one of them had been able to put into practice my teachings. 
one boy stated, I am trying to speak truth under any circumstances. Another boy explained, I love God always. God is my mother, father and my very life breath. His name was Keshanna. His mother was Bugapalli Achamma. Poor woman, she used to earn her living by running a small pawn shop selling cigarettes and beadies. Another boy agreed, It is not possible to implement all good things taught by Raju. Nevertheless, I feel very happy to hear Raju explaining those things. In fact, his very words make everyone happy. Yet another boy stated, How can we be indifferent when Raju is teaching so sweetly and lovingly? I love Raju very much. In the end, all the children declared in one voice, Not only you, all of us love Raju very much. Thus, all the children around me used to yearn for my love. I used to gather the children and teach them a number of principles relating to spiritual sadhana. I used to advise them, Dear children, you must take only sattvic food. You should not eat meat or fish. In those days, several people in this village used to catch fish from the village tank and sell them for consumption by the villagers. That was their profession. I used to tell them that it was not proper to kill so many living beings for the sake of their livelihood and it was a sin to harm the living beings. I also told them that they should desist from bad habits like smoking and drinking. It was customary in those days to organize bullock cart races. The villagers used to decorate their bullock carts tastefully and yoke the bullocks to them. Ten to fifteen bulky people with large-sized tummies used to sit on those carts and make the bullocks run faster and faster in the sand by whipping them mercilessly. Unable to witness the great torture those dumb animals were made to undergo, I used to call the children one by one and tell them, Look, this particular cart belongs to your family. You tell your father not to beat those poor bullocks. You see to it that this does not happen again. Thus, I brought about a transformation in the elders through their own children. Not only the bullock cart races, but competitions in cockfighting were also being held in those days in the villages. Knives were tied to the legs of the cocks and they were encouraged to fight with one another. It was a fight intended to kill the other. I used to counsel them, saying, This is a most cruel and evil practice. Instead of arranging a competition in killing the dumb birds, why don't you organize a competition among yourselves to improve your skills? Gradually, this matter had reached the father of this body, Venkamaraju. He called me and chided me. What? You're just a small kid. Why do you interfere in the affairs of the elders in the village? These are all unnecessary matters for you. I told him, I am not interfering in the affairs of the elders in the village. They are torturing mute animals and birds just for the sake of fun. I do not at all agree to this. He realized that it was futile to argue with me. He then instructed Griham Amai, Ishrama, At least you tell him not to interfere with such matters. While serving food, she tried to convince me, saying, Satya, why do you interfere with the matters pertaining to the elders? Your father does not like this. Moreover, you will get a bad name. However, I firmly replied to her, I consider what I am doing is a good work. 
when I am thus engaged in a good work, how can my name ever be tarnished? The grandfather of this body, Kundamaraju, then called the villagers and explained to them, Look, our Satyam is not doing anything bad. He is only doing a good thing. You should not hurt any living being. You should not organize these bullock cart races and cockfights. They will, at the end, cause enmity between one another. Ultimately, peace and tranquility in the village gets disturbed. Thus, I could successfully prevent the bullock cart races and cockfights from being organized in Puttaparthi. Every individual should help his fellow human beings to the extent possible. You must visit the villages and slums in the towns and cities and help them to maintain clean and healthy environment. You must help the children by providing free food, clothing and education. If you can do this service, it will be of great help to the society. Not only now, even from my childhood, I have been engaged in various service activities. I used to help others. Whenever a beggar stood in front of the house and asked for arms, the people in the house used to turn him away saying, Go, go, not now. But I used to bring food from the house without their knowledge and feed those beggars. If somebody wanted clothes, I used to give away my old clothes. I am telling you the truth. I used to have only one set of shirt and trousers throughout the year in those days. I used to wear them at the time of going to the school and after coming home, I used to wash them daily, wrapping a towel around my body. After they were dried, I used to iron them with a brass jug-like vessel, putting live embers in it. The Griham Abai, Pedda Venkamaraju, never used to scold me or beat me. He used to jocularly say, My dear, you are a great Tyagi, renunciant. How can we rise to your level of detachment? He used to call me Vedanti, philosopher. So also the Griham Ammai Iswaramma. She also used to treat me with great love and care.